We all know how familiar we are with the United Kingdom, specifically in Scotland, but this time, let's take a bit of a turn. This time, let's go down under and visit Australia, the northeast part of this country, and we approach the city of Townsville, our location for episode this time, and there's three wee dudes that live here. The Powerpuff Girls. Meet Blossom, Bubbles and Buttercup. Their goal is fighting scandals, despite their young ages. What does that say? Skull-faced phantom? Will you keep up? Hey, that's no way to talk to your sister. What's this thing on the wall you're curious about, Bubbles? Come on, let's see. There. Look, it's on that paper. Beware the skull faced phantom. Skull faced phantom? Tuh, don't be ridiculous. First, we had the silly global conspiracy about some goddess for nearly two years, and people won't shut up about it. And now this. Hey, that goes as far back as our earliest memories. Suck it up, buttercup. Think about that. Professor? Get bubbles! Have you ever heard of something called the Skull Faced Phantom? Uh, oh, I have. But a long, long time ago. So long ago that I think I've completely forgotten any certain details regarding it. Oh. <sighs> Bubbles, you all right? Nothing, nothing, boss. Bubbles, what's this I've been hearing about some skull faced phantom getting to you? I feel like I saw it last night in the dark. It looked so scary. Mmm. I see your sister Blossom has been deeply worried about you since you caught wind of this thing. Yes, and and the skull-faced phantom has been driving me mad. I just wanted to leave my head. I can't take it any longer. I understand. I understand that your shyness comes not necessarily from the fact that you're autistic, but from the fact that you've gone through many experiences of the dark before. But you should understand that being scared of the dark is not just an autism thing, it's even a non-autism thing too. For a few examples of an autistic trait are you may not like a certain food, such as Japanese food, or Chinese food, and by way more familiar with Australian food, or American food, or British food, or Irish food. Or if it's way too noisy for you to process something as you are thinking about a certain something, it's so noisy that it's hard to cope, and you go into a panic meltdown temper tantrum rampage, and you would want to be somewhere a lot quieter, like... Do you know somewhere here in Townsville that you feel safe in? Um, the, the beach. Okay, we might as well just run with it. The thing is, I often get scared when going too deep in the water because I feel like there are sharks in there. Well, that's what parents' advice about not going too far into the sea is for. And to be honest... Considering that the Pacific Ocean is beyond that beach 
Many and even non-autistics can find that quite stigma. And of course, if anyone says that being autistic is a bad thing or a disability, and smash their face in, autistic bigotry is not welcome and will not be left unpunished. We arrive at the Townsville Beach. The reason for our stopover is a place of comfort for Bubbles. A good explanation of why this place would be a comfort for her is the lack of crowds and noises. You see, if you're autistic and you don't like too much noise, chances are you would must catch a break by going somewhere where there isn't as much noise and crowds and bangs and all that malarkey. Places such as beaches are less likely to be packed with crowds and stuff like that. Better? Much better, Blossom. Less noisy. Hey, Bubbles. You okay? Huh? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You don't look fine to me. Uh, uh, you're right. I'm not fine. It's just that that's the Pacific Ocean. With how huge it is, it blows my mind. I'm just the size of a watch drop compared to it. I understand, Bubbles. It is a bit crazy in some instances, if I'm not gonna lie. I think it'd be best to go back to land until the wave dies off. I think so too. It's just seaweed. Here, let me help. It's just seaweed. It's not hands of a sea monster or anything like that. That night, when a gust of wind blew, Bubbles was finding it hard to sleep. She couldn't figure out what it was that was preventing her from falling asleep. But she eventually did figure out what it was. It was the lack of a juice bottle. Even though there was one right beside her in the three girls' bed. But Bubbles is easy to forget certain things. So she went out to the kitchen, even though it was completely dark. But it was up to her to get her bottle. Cracky, sure. Bubbles, whatever is the matter? He, he, I saw him. So who? The scarfaced phantom. Me. Hmm. I see. <laughs> Maybe you were just seeing it through your eyes. Maybe it wasn't really there. You were probably just imagining it. It was there because you were waiting for your worst fear to come through. Hmm. I hope it's gone now. Why are you even out of your bed and up at this time of night? I'm just looking for a bottle of juice. I'm thirsty. Have you not forgotten that you've got one at the side of your bed? Oh, sorry. I've just been so stupid now. Hey, don't talk about yourself like that. You haven't been stupid, but I'm expected to believe that this whole skull-faced phantom twat is a bad influence on you. So what I think would be the best thing to do about it is maybe just not think about the scumfy phantom twat that much and just focus on something more positive. Bubbles thought for a minute about what Professor Utonium said to her. And before you go gallivanting off, Bubbles, Remember, just focus solely on positive stuff. Okay, Professor. Ah, you know something? This is actually my glass of squash. 
Sí, yo. Oye, vos. ¿Ah? Yeah, I'm talking to you, you little piece of skin. Oh, great. You two, is it? What are you floating around for, Butch? Hey, para acá. Para acá. I don't like when they fight. Why can't everyone just not be so mean spirited? Stop fighting now! Back at the Purpuff Girls' house, Bubbles was on her own in her room. She was still stressing deeply about the negative stuff that has happened. You see, here's the thing. No matter how positive you feel about the positives, the negatives are going to stick out and shine brighter than the positives. And that is also a threat to your health. A threat to personal health comes from focusing too much on negativity, and it can also be really harmful as well. There's also a high chance it can push the boundaries absurdly and stretch the limits to your mental and emotional well-being. Even to the point where it's distracting a lot of the time and it starts to get really annoying and it can also gaslight you in some instances. And without a decent enough comfort zone where you can massage yourself in any way you can, there will come a moment where all your negative emotions will string together and reach a breaking point. It's stuff like this that happens and there will come a moment where you can't take it anymore, where if it raises the bar, you will be unable to handle it. You may also call it the Mexican standoff with no end in sight. Your own one, that is. And there's a chance it can also be rather dangerous too. What do I mean by dangerous? Well, if it is close to reaching its limit, and if you've been in this personal situation for a long period of time, or long enough, there's a chance it can knock you unconscious, and it can also ruin your sleep patterns and make you fall asleep more and more. And that's where a burnout comes into view. You would even be sleepwalking, and if powerful enough, it can kill you. It's stuff like this that can doom your future. She might be dead, or she might be in some coma or something. I better go closer to check for breathing. She's breathing, so she's sleeping. What? Where am I? Is the matter, sis? Bubbles, wake up! Open your eyes! No, I don't want to open my eyes to find two red eyes staring at me. It keeps me out. It gives me the heebie jeebies. Bubbles, there's nothing to see in the dark. 
Open your eyes. It's only me. There's no red eyes. Exactly. You just had a bad dream, that's all. Oh, thanks, Blossom. I just feel so stupid now. But you haven't been stupid. It's easy to see how you or any others are likely to be severely affected by stuff like that poster showing Skullface Phantom or those two red eyes if they just so happen to be in the realm of reality. And now you're scared to death if it suddenly turns up when you wake up in the middle of the night because anyone around your age is easily going to find something to be scared of. Listen, Bubbles, it's okay to be afraid. Everyone is afraid of something. Anyone around your age will most likely be scared easily of many things such as phantom ghosts that go bump in the night, even though it's just a silly fairy tale, but that's not the point. Regardless, it is going to stay stuck with you. You will grow out of it eventually, and it can hurt, but naturally, when something else catches your attention and piques your interest, you will grow out of it and grow more into what recently piqued your interest. Hopefully something on a more positive topic. Good day, Sheila. I would advise you. There is a tsunami on our shores, so I think it's best to take shelter. What's a tsunami? It's when a massive wave of water hits the land and leaves a ridiculous amount of destruction. Could we swim up to the top of that wave? Not even there. Wait, drown and die. Jesus, that sounds a bit dark. I'm starting to think it's for our safety them if you run. Come on, Bubbles. The wave was approaching Townsville's shores and would cause an unrepairable amount of damage. The tsunami was huge! Everyone tried to find somewhere to shelter, but they were crunched for time. The clock had run out before they could even find a place to shield! The tsunami was so strong that it swept Bubbles away from Townsville to Alice Springs, a distance of over 2,000 kilometres to the west. It was also so strong to have wiped Bubbles' memories, so now she can't remember where she originally lived anymore. She can't remember anyone called Blossom or Buttercup or Professor Utonium or any word of a skull-faced phantom. Nothing. The ass so we just did take a natural deadly dog in Alice Springs in Central Australia. What did it look like? Yeah, I said to for you and to for you had that yellow hair and and blue clothing set. Australia. That's going to take me nearly 22 hours to get me there. Nevertheless, I've still got to help that poor kid. Ada, Ada, please don't go. Oh, Dot just wants to say goodbye. Ada, I don't want you to leave. I don't feel comfortable without you. Dot, it's okay. I'm not moving out. I'm just heading out to help a poor kid in Australia and bring them here. Can I at least come with you, please? I'm sorry, Dot, but it's much too dangerous out there for you to go out there in the big wide world. Even if you're with me, it's best for you just to stay behind. Oh, Dot, you want a hug, don't you? Come here. Please don't be long. I won't, sweetie. Maybe just two days at the most. 
<laughs> Two days? Yes, I've just got to get out of here by portal to England and catch a flight from the UK to Alice Springs in Central Australia. But, but, I'll never see you for ages. I know you won't, but you do know it's just for two days at most. Dot, at least try to live just two whole days without me, please. There, that's my cute little sister. Now just go back to your room and go to sleep. I'll still be alive when I'm not here. Because you know, Dot, you're getting upset over my departure, no matter how short it is. I don't think you'll be the only one with that mindset. Okay now, I've got you. <laughs> Who are you? Shh. Don't be scared anymore. I am Arthur, the princess ant of my own colony. I'm... I'm Bubbles. Can you remember where your home is? <laughs> no. A homeless little kid, how sad is that? You're homeless, but don't worry too much longer because I'm here to help you. You are? Yes. It's actually really chilly out here, I must say. Let's get out of here to Alice Springs Airport.
folks, now, you know, but you know, slow motion, it is certainly it. This is my new home. Yes, it is. In the meantime, until I have let the rest of the monarchy know that you're here, and until they have found you a bed, you can sleep with me. Thank you, Princess. Oh, that's all right. And from now on, just call me Atta. Oh, Bubbles. Cute little sweetie. Whoa! That floor is caked in grease! Tomato sauce caked in mold! Yuck! The oven's going all slimy! Oh my god almighty! Ken, what this is sure! It's peanut flanada and vodka mixed together! Jesus bloody hell! In the next episode, after water activities in Greenlaw, some of our dudes run into a water portal that leads to some castle in Iceland surrounded by lava, only to find a certain someone who hasn't been taken care of very well. So stick around for the next episode of Teammates of Britain to Iceland.